Hello again, everybody. Um, as you know, we've spent most of our energy so far uh, describing how to start a diesel engine, a gardener engine, and how to keep it running. But today we're going to concern ourselves with how to stop them, or more accurately, how to strangle them. Strangle them or kill them. Please don't talk about switching off a diesel engine. A petrol engine, yes, you switch off a petrol engine because you switch off the supply of current. It's an electrical, an immediate electrical process. But a diesel engine, we strangle. Uh, whenever we strangle our wife or a small child or, or a dog or something, we rob it of oxygen and it dies. The same process with a diesel engine. Whenever we strangle it, we rob it of fuel and it dies. Now here we have a bog standard 6LXB injector pump that we all know and love so well. And you will all know that we strangle it by moving this lever forward. Uh, or moving it, moving it uh, aft in fact. So whenever we move that lever forward, it pushes the rack back and cuts off all the fuel supply to the engine and the engine dies. So how do we bring this about? The injector pump is on the side of the engine. The engine is down in the engine room of a boat. Uh, the skipper could be in the wheelhouse, which is three, four, five, maybe 10 meters away. Same as a bus. The driver, generally speaking, is in the front seat. Uh, the engine could be right at the back, as in a London bus, for example. So how do we strangle the engine? Now, one of the simplest ways of doing that is to use a cable, much like a bicycle cable. We simply run the cable around here, put a stop on here, the cable will pull the lever back, and that kills the engine. Very simple. Now, but very often we want to go maybe just a little bit more sophisticated than that. That's a very long run of maybe four, five, ten meters for a cable. It would be nice to do it electrically. So we're going to take a look at that now. But before we do that, we just examine this lever here. I didn't bother fixing it permanently. It's really very clever. If you look here, you'll see that there's slots. And equally so, there's slots in the shaft. So that lever can be positioned in its home position in any one of four different quadrants, which is really very clever on the part of Gardner because in its home position, we can position it wherever, wherever it's convenient, really. It doesn't really matter. So let's go and take a look now at how we can do this electrically. So as you've probably guessed already, yes, we can use a solenoid, very simple. Um, here we have a low cost, uh, very simple, very rugged, quite reliable little solenoid and it'll do the job for us quite well. If I supply it with electric energy and switch it on, it'll pull in. And I think you can tell even by that quick demo that that pull is actually quite strong. It really is quite strong. It'll apply quite a lot of force there. So in this case, we've positioned our, our uh, <coughs> strangling lever there. If I can now mount my solenoid there, it will pull the lever down no problem. If only life was so simple. Let's take this apart and have a look inside and see what we've got. So if I take off the boot here, I can pull this out altogether. This is called the armature. You'll see there's no windings or anything in it. It's just a simple piece of plain mild steel. Once the coil in here is electrically energized, as you know, I, as I will have explained before, this becomes magnetized and it simply pulls in that iron core. It's as simple as that. It's really, really simple. But I think you can imagine that whenever the steel bar is out here just at the very start of its stroke the magnet's not very strong 
as it comes in, it gets stronger and stronger and stronger right to the home position. Um, I think you can also imagine that this coil of wire here is just the same as any coil of wire. And if you place it across an electric source, a voltage, it presents to that voltage what's known as a short circuit. The resistance to the electric current is in fact zero or very, very low. So the coil will pull a lot of current. So the manufacturers realize that if this current in here is allowed to flow continuously for any length of time, the coil will just overheat and burn out. And that's what happens with a lot of these solenoids unless they're set up properly. So what they've organized is, as the plunger comes in right to its home position, there's actually a small switch in the back here, which you can't see. But that switch switches into the circuit a resistor. And that resistor limits the current. It limits the current to a value where the magnet is strong enough to keep the plunger in, but not so strong as to burn out the coil. I hope you've got that. So we'll just go over that again. Whenever the plunger is out here, it's got quite a weak pull. As it comes in, longer and stronger until it's maximum in the home position. A little, a little switch inside here switches in a resistance and that limits the current. Now this is really important because if that plunger doesn't come fully home, the switch isn't activated and a heavy current will continue to flow. Bang, there goes your coil. So it's really, really important that that plunger comes completely home and isn't fouled in any way. But now we're faced with a fundamental engineering problem. It leads to a fundamental engineering problem. This motion here inside the coil is linear. Let's say we're moving it this way, is linear. This motion here is circular. Can you see that? That point there, any of those points, is scribing the arc of a circle. So the risk is, <clears throat> as the plunger comes down, because this is a circular movement and this is a linear movement, it'll bind. It'll, ja <clears throat> it'll jam in here in the housing and it won't get back to that fully home position. I hope that's clear. So the design of this has to be spot on. Now, how do we do that? How do we get around this problem of uh, circular motion uh, combined with a linear motion? There's a number of ways. What we've done in the past is we've actually cut a slot here. So whenever we join this screw thread on here, it actually slides up and down that slot. You can see this if you study this uh, this picture of a generator we done some time back and you'll see the slot cut in this lever quite plainly. <clears throat> Another way is to have a piece of light chain attached from here to here and the chain then will uh, prevent the bar from binding and that again works quite well. But we're not quite out of the woods yet. Um, You'll understand, if you've understood, that the plunger will pull this strangling lever down like that and kill the engine, no problem. But what happens whenever we go to restart the engine again? The engine is going to be in the strangled position and lo and behold, she'll not start. So we address that by using a second spring. We simply fit a spring on here, yeah, so that once the solenoid lets go, that spring pushes the strangler back up again. Um, it's easy enough done. Now this spring is, okay I'll confess, it's just a conventional black spring from the back there and it's a bit too strong for this job. Uh, so you have to choose this spring so that it's strong enough to bring the plunger back up but not so strong 
that the solenoid can't overcome it. But uh, remember that this is strongest at the bottom of its stroke, which is where this spring needs the most pull. So the solenoid actually works with us in this instance. You'll see that there is a wee bit of a spring there in that boot, but it's not sufficient uh, to bring the plunger back up to its uh, extended position. So that's it. That's all I've got for you on strangling gardener, gardener engines. As always, as always with gardeners, it's super fun. <laughs>